Oh yes, the sounds of OC Remix with the Giles theme there. I do love OC Remix and all those who post on it. It is fantastic. Therefore, we promote them like there's no tomorrow. And speaking of promotion, yes, UGTServers.com. It's funny, we don't actually advertise anything that sucks. This is something that I've always been very, 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 you know, centred on. I don't like advertising things that suck. So... When UGT servers came to me and said, yeah, we want to give you some vent servers and we'll give you some money a month to advertise. I thought, okay, fair enough, we'll give it a shot. And seriously, their vent server is actually really good. We've got our 50 slot Ventrilo server and that's public. So anyone that wants to go check it out, go on the WoW Radio server. The details are in our news and on the forums. Go check it out, wcradio.com and see for yourself. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I mean, getting a vent server is tricky stuff because I'm just used to Googling for it, so... And that, I'll give them my endorsement, and I don't endorse many things, so I'll give them my endorsement. Solid vent server. Speaking of servers, we also now have a Counter Strike server coming out of my own pocket. I might add, anyone wants to donate the monthly costs, then just send PayPal to deltabiscuit at gmail.com. I love you. Yeah. So we've got an 18 slot Counter Strike server with tournaments that will be starting very, very soon indeed. Go check out the Counter Strike forum wcradio.com our forums it's in the gaming discussion and go and play with the guys in the Counter-Strike server it's really quite nifty and I'm not very good at it I used to be okay at Counter-Strike now sadly I do suck and fail at everything I used to play two years ago and I solely need to get back in practice alright okay now that that's out of the way let's get on with it now I'm going to do the whole ZoMG I am linking topics together thing by skipping of course the transfers and do those a little bit later and We'll talk about patch 2.2. We've just been talking about fixing crafting. And as you will probably be well aware, have you checked out certain places like World of Raids and MMO Champion? There will be certain things added. Yes, they will. They will be added to patch 2.2. And supposedly this will help. This will help to alleviate some of the problems that crafting is having. Now, I'm going to finish off a couple of emails from Second Wind first, just to lead us into this topic, because it's quite relevant. Now, I sadly didn't actually get to finish after Burns' email, so I'm going to finish it for him. And he said, there is one other option as regards to crafting, and he says, deteriorating armor. And it goes something like this. Each week, some of your crafted item stats decide to deteriorate or deplete. If you don't add more of a certain reagent, it needs to keep its luster and shiny epic quality. If you skip one week, then the next week, your material costs will double, leaving your stats even lower. Hmm. So, yeah. That's another idea of balancing craftable gear. But yeah, as far as I can tell, it does seem to me that, like I said earlier, craftable gear and the way of these BOP things is the entire profession is centered around certain things. I know for a fact the only reason that I level tailoring, for instance, is to get Spellfire. That is the only reason. There is no other reason whatsoever that I level tailoring. I didn't expect to make any money from it whatsoever. I wanted Spellfire and that was the only reason I sank so many hundreds, thousands of gold into it. There. Now, Jared Moni has an interesting one, also known as Vathian, his level 70 Blood Elf Shadow Priest from Agamagamagamagaman, US. And he says this I don't have much experience in any crafting professions other than tailoring and enchanting, so I'll only be drawing my opinions from these. I think it's rather fitting that the best crafted tailoring items are specifically for those who are tailors themselves, much like engineering, but in that defense, most have never really seen engineering as useful except for the elite rock soul goggles as of lately. The original complaint was that at level 60, tailoring was rather insignificant, other than crafting a few bags and posting them on the AH. PvPers wanted PvP gear, PvEers wanted PvE gear, simple as that. Every so often you could sell a few pieces here and there, but mostly you were left being a bag crafter. Now, in TBC, we have some of this awesome gear that I see as being a reward for leveling tailoring. You can't pass it on to anyone else, being BOP, so it's a singular benefit. Granted, it may be overpowered when looking at other gear, but the release of Zulaman and such in future, I don't think this will be the case much longer. We will see better gear, we will be crafting better gear, I say, let's just enjoy it while we can. Yeah, again, the problem there being that it's the entire focus of the profession. I like my crafting professions to be a profession, a trade skill, something that I can make money off of. I don't like grinding. I will freely attest that I don't like grinding, but I don't mind grinding for materials to make something that's going to make me an even greater profit. But if it's not going to, then... What's the, well, you know, what's the point? This leads on to the silliness of enchanting, for instance. Enchanting is something I cannot make money off for love, no money. Because people are insistent on being stupid. As in, they will not charge material costs, or they will make enchants for less than the cost of material, just for simply to either clear their banks or to level enchanting, because it is such a nightmare to level up. And some people who have got the 375 give free enchants, and they are stupid, because they are ruining the market. Now... 
Blizzard's approach, apparently in 2.2, is to add more. Apparently more is better. So, if you go to worldofraids.com, you can check in the news and you will see particularly new jewel crafting patterns and I say new enchanting, but that would be a misnomer. It's not really new. It's revamped. Now, if you have a look at worldofraids.com slash news slash new enchants.jpg worldofraids.com slash news slash new enchants.jpg you will see five new enchants or so you think now those of you who have played extensively anchorage content will know that these enchants are not in fact new they are remakes they are remakes of the AQ40 blue drop enchants they consist of a selection of rather decent enchants mostly cloak and some gloves there were other enchants, but they have simply not been added by the looks of it. And not surprising, because they're now completely out of date. We've got Gloves Threat. Yep. Increases threat generated. Great for tanks. Yep. Enchant Cloak Subtlety, which reduces threat. Even better. Yeah, that's great for anybody. Except, of course, tanks. Enchant Cloak Stealth. Permanent increase on stealth level. That's great for rogues and, of course, sneaky, sneaky feral druids. Enchant Cloak Dodge. Again, rogues and anyone that's doing PvP. And superior agility, which is 15 agility on gloves, which is great. Now, here in lies the rub. These require 300 enchanting. And you say, why? Well, it's quite simple. The old ones required 300 enchanting. It's simply a remake. Now, here's the really bad thing. Requires exalted. And it's not just with one faction. It's with all of them. Every single last one. Shatar, on a hold, Scenario Expedition, Lower City, and Keepers of Time. Exalted for each and every single one of these blasted things. Uh, you know what? When I saw new enchanting recipes, I thought, great, finally, an opportunity for me to maybe make some money. No. <laughs> high, high, exalted with everything. I'm sorry. Exalted with everything? You, I, are you joke, mate? Seriously, are you joke? It, it is rather, rather silly. I mean, from what I saw from the Reputation Grinds, and I still do believe this, the Reputation Grinds were set up quite nicely in the Burning Crusade by putting at the end of the Rep Grind a specific reward that was specific to a class. Yep. Say, like, Scenario and Expedition. What class, and I'm sure you can pull this off the top of your head, what class is going to be most concerned with getting exalted? Feral Druids. Why Earth Warden? What about Four Man on a hold? Which class is going to be most concerned with getting exalted? Mages and Warlocks. Why the Stormcaller and whatever the hell the other thing is? The Blade of Arcane something. I don't know what it is. But yeah. Basically, there were spell damage swords. They were very good. Were. I say were. They're not really anymore. Has to be said. They're not really up to standard. They were upgraded in the past, but not by much. And we can look at the rest of them and see that there are specific reasons to get too exalted with certain factions. And that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. Because, well, everyone needs a rep grind from time to time. Rep grinds are a part of the game. We've got to accept that. And those rewards are specific. So if I really wanted to, I could get too exalted with Thralmar and I could get my Stormcaller. Okay? And that is my... ZOMG uber weapon for my particular class or spec. Now, I wouldn't bother getting exalted with any other faction, really, because, well, that's it. I might have revered with the rest of them. Okay, revered. That revered's easy enough to get. There are exceptions. For instance, the Shatar don't have any questing rep, which is just stupid, which is the same reason I am honoured with Shatar, because, good lord, I am not running those bloody instances again for no other purpose than rep grinding. Whereas with, say, Thorma, I only had to run the instances a small number of times. I was able to get my rep while leveling and questing, yeah? So when I, Burning Crusade first came out, I ran Ramparts and I ran Blood Furnace until I got all the gear I wanted. And then I did the quests. Then I did the quests, which left me almost revered to begin with. So when I hit 70, I hit Shattered Halls a couple of times to get the gear I wanted and boom, I'm revered. Great, I've got access to Heroics. Fantastic, brilliant, I'm on the ball, that's great, that's the way it should be. That wasn't a grind at all. I enjoyed that, that had a purpose. Now, Shatar. Oh yeah, all the instances are effectively level 70 instances, give or take. Mechanar maybe a little bit, you know, 68, 69, but the rest of it's 70. And what's worse, there are no rep grind quests for it either. There are no hand-ins, it's all 
rep from instances. Now, I don't know about you, but at level 70, I was more concerned about getting into Karazhan and getting the epic sa, not the blues. Not the rubbish, terrible, horrible, evil blues of death that had no purpose for me whatsoever. And let's face it, they're also rather frustrating instances. So I'm stuck at the fact that I am honoured with Shatar. Now, what's the problem? Well, there wasn't a problem beforehand anyway. I would have ground to revered and there was nothing at the end ex- and exalted for Shatar for me. And I, I'm cool with that. I don't need to grind. Now, however... I have five enchanting recipes which all require Exalted with different factions. As an enchanter, it's in my best interest to own them all. Are you kidding? Do you seriously want me to grind Exalted with every single faction to get what is effectively only a revamp? I, I, I was flabbergasted by that. And I thought, oh, it's okay. Because maybe, just maybe, some other factions have suffered the same problem. No, they haven't. Jewel crafting. The golden boy of Blizzard. Because everyone knows Blizzard loves jewel crafting. Shatar, revered. Jewel crafting pattern. Epic, epic gem. Plus 12 spell crit. Epic gem. Requires a dawn stone. A dawn stone. A dawn stone. All you need is a dawn stone. Are you kidding me? I mean, look at this. Seriously, go with this. Worldofraids.com slash new slash new designs dot jpeg. New designs dot jpeg. Look at all of this. Jewel crafting. Another epic gem. Faces of eternity. Cubes of time. Honored. Honored. An epic gem at honored. Plus 12 spell defense. Uh, sorry, plus 12 defense rating. Look at all this other stuff. Consortium. 24 attack power. Revered. Falling star. Revered with lower city. 18 stamina. Stone of blades. Plus 12 critical strike rating. I'm sorry, are you trying to drive me away from the game? I mean, I'm sorry, enchanting is hard enough as it is. I already can't auction my stuff. I'm already dealing with morons who think they're, I'm so happy, I'm such a hippie, hippie friendly person because I'm giving away things for free. You're a jackass. You're selfish. Nobody likes you. Nobody. Seriously, everyone in the enchanting world, everyone in the crafting world hates you because you're giving stuff away for free. And that devalues our entire profession. But, to add insult to injury, I need to get exalted with five factions. Five to get raid level enchants. I'm sorry, is there something I can use here? This is my passport. I have my passport right here. And this is the sound of me beating my head against it. Why? Please, somebody explain to me why. It's insane. How are you expected to fix trading when all you're going to do is buff an already exceptionally good profession? Jewel crafting doesn't have the problems we have. Any other profession. Every other profession has these problems. Every single one of them. The, the vast majority of our stuff is useless. But there is so much stuff for jewel crafting. And like alchemy used to be before they nerfed it into the ground... It is, to some degree, still. It, it's consumable, yeah? People are always going to need new gems. They're always going to need them because their guilds demand that you socket your gear. And why not? Everyone loves to socket their gear. Socketing gear is great fun. I love it. I think it's one of the best things they've ever added into the game. If not the best. Customising gear? Brilliant. That is fantastic. A little bit of individuality to my gear and my character. Someone can have the same gear as me and yet be socketed completely different. Genius. Complete and total genius. One of the best things they've ever added. But, but, so they're adding more gems? But I'm sorry, w- well, weren't the gems good enough already? <laughs> I didn't see any problem. I mean, I see topazes, noble topazes, or whatever they call them, potent topazes. I can't remember. Noble topazes going for 19 gold on the AH. Yet a potent noble topaz sells for 34. So all I need to do in order to make almost double the money is to have a recipe that allows me to cut a potent noble topaz. And there are no other reagents. I could just buy 10 noble topazes, cut them all, and look, profit, question mark, question mark, question mark, not involved here. Cut, profit, not even a question mark in the middle. Wonderful. Now, I'm sorry, but that is ludicrous, because you've got a perfect example of how a profession should be, and yet the rest of it is lagging behind. And in the patch, of course, you have the opportunity to fix that by adding new useful recipes. Where's the new tailoring stuff? Where's the new enchants that don't require exalted with every faction there is? 
I mean, factions that you would have no other reason to grind up with. And to add insult to injury, they're not even new. They're not even new. And yeah, I'm aware that, of course, that these gems, they're unique equip. Okay, cool, they're unique equip. That doesn't make them any less useful. It is, it's madness. It's not even Sparta or Cake Town. It's just simply madness, in my opinion, that they can allow such a thing to happen. In the same patch, they can spit in the faces of one profession and yet buff to all hell another that is already pretty good as it is. I don't get... I mean, if anyone's got an opinion on this, feel free to email me. Seriously, the Murloc at gmail.com. I just don't fathom it. i got an update news on the issue, in fact. You listen to Blue Please here on Wild Radio with Ranting Biscuit. This is update news. Enjoy. Welcome to this week's edition of Nubcake News. Coming up later in the program, a special behind the scenes look into Blizzard's secret game development, World of Pokercraft. Vash, use your splash attack. Oh no, Gammon, quick, evade. Bosh! Oh, Gammon, now I'll never become a poker master. Wait, what's happening? <gasps> it looks like Gammon has evolved into Hogamon. Hogamon, use your dark glare attack. Wait, what game are we playing again? But first, the workshops are empty, the mana looms are silent, and the auction house is totally devoid of enchants as the ever declining Azerothian's Craftsmen's Association goes on strike. At the comparative uselessness of crafting and gathering to the many other professions in the world of Warcraft. As a result, uncertainty, confusion, and terror rocked the market, with some claiming that the lack of imperial plate would be the downfall of society as we know it. We attempted to reach the Enchanters Guild for a comment, but were met only by a few wide-eyed businessmen snorting extortionately expensive arcane dust off the bare stomach of an orcish belly dancer. The Engineers Association yielded even more confusing results, with goblins and gnomes alike being found chained to their machinery, all screaming in unison, ze goggle, ze do nothing! We wandered this street of Shatrath for a while until we found one establishment still open, the Jewel Crafters Jamboree. We peered inside to find great halls carved entirely of gold and eternium with statues of Arcanite and ashtrays carved out of Azerothian diamond. We were able to speak to a master jewel crafter who was found swimming and laughing maniacally in what appeared to be a money pit. I really can't understand what all the fuss is about. Crafting has never been in a healthy estate. The markets are up, the demand is always high, and everything we can make is always useful and wanted by the masses. Can life get any better than this? Here's a thousand gold. Go get me a sandwich. What, what kind? Uh, I guess a Murloc club? Whatever, I'm not going to eat it anyway. And a soda. Get me a soda. Confused by this new development, that crafting is apparently fine L to P, we went and spoke to Blizzard themselves, who were found playing StarCraft II LAN. What? What? World of Warcraft? Ah, oh, screw that, man. This is the future. See? See these ultra-high detailed units? Look, this one's even got a hat! Oh, the, oh, the crafting issue. Uh, 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 James, James, give me this one. Seriously, I'm in his base killing his dudes here. Oh, uh, right, yeah, the crafting, yes. We listened to the concerns of crafters and come to the conclusion that what the game needs are more reputation-based crafting rewards. So we've come up with some that we think will satisfy everyone. To ensure a fair playing field for all, we have reset and likened the reputation gaining experience. We feel that this will balance the charm, and I mean the game, for new and veteran players alike. Introducing the Flask of Centaur Might, acquirable at Exalted with the Magram Centaur faction. For two hours, the player will gain a cloud of irritating flies, which will reduce the chance of an enemy strike hitting by 2%. Sadly, such a formidable ability must have a downside. The flies themselves are so irritating that players will not be able to join groups while using this flask. Fortunately, with the recent introduction of our new solo raid content, we feel that this flask will find its place in the endgame world. To ensure that the flask is properly used, we have ensured that it require the latest and greatest up-to-date ingredients, including grave moss, purple lotus, and a huge amount of ice cap. For enchanters, we decided to give them several new reputation factions. However, they will only gain a single recipe for gaining exalted with all seven of these factions. 
This is in line with our vision to make enchanting the most mind-numbingly, horribly painful experience for a I mean challenging profession to master. The recipe itself we feel is an appropriate reward for enchanters and as such is B.O.P. and can only be used on the enchanter himself. The recipe is that of exceptional enchantment, which provides a plus five to enchantment skill. While there are no 380 required enchantment recipes, this will ensure that enchanting has a high success chance and will not fail as much as it used to destroying the materials. We've also included the additional proc into the recipe, which will allow enchanters to proc multiple enchants on the same piece of equipment. Sadly, they will not stack, but well, if they did, that would be insanely overpowered, am I right? Uh, uh, this new recipe will require the new ruined elementium rod, requiring 20 elementium bars and 57 primal might to construct. We hate enchanters and want them all to die. I mean, we want enchanters to experience the new content to its fullest and to savor the moment for as long as possible. Last but not least, we have jewel crafters, who will gain a total of 86 new recipes dependent entirely on their home city's reputation. All of these recipes can be acquired at Friendly. We do not believe that jewel crafters are fulfilling their intended role at this point. They obviously require more incredibly useful and profitable patterns. We'll also be allowing multiple gems to proc from a single cut in order to offset the huge reagent cost required in every day jewel crafting transactions. Engineers sadly get nothing. We gave them goggles. What more do they want? So, but for all, crafting is a truly fabulous place to be right now. This has been Nubcake News. Good night.